Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. I'm actually sharing with you some test questions on application of vectors. This is from a very recent test paper, 2019. The question here is, a 15 kg mass is suspended from a ceiling by two hooks, 25 cm apart. The mass is attached to the hooks by two pieces of strings, one 15 cm and the other 20 cm in length. Find the tension in each string. Include a position diagram and a vector diagram with your solution. I would like you to pause the video, answer this question and then look into my suggestions. Now let's begin with what is given to us. So we have a ceiling here. So let me sketch the diagram. Now in this ceiling is given to us as what two hooks and from these two hooks we have two strings so these strings are 15 and 20 centimeter long right so we'll make one smaller right the other one longer okay so these are the two strings now from these two strings we do have a mass holding kind of like this okay now the tension because of this will be in the direction and the mass has weight which is kind of a force which will act downwards correct so so we have here all the things mentioned now this is which kind of a diagram is it a position diagram or a vector diagram now that actually gives you the position of each and everything as explained in the particular question. Is that clear? Right? Now to complete this position diagram, let me write down here. This is position diagram. Now to complete this position diagram, we need to fill in all the values correct so so we only know the three sides actually this is 25 centimeters the distance between the two hooks and the length of the strings which is 15 and 20 centimeters right so all units are in centimeters okay the mass given to us is 15 kg so this force which acts here will be 15 times 9.8 kg weight or we can write newtons right so that is it we still need to find the angles to complete our diagram is that clear now since we have three sides right so it is side 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 that means we could use cosine law right so we'll use cosine law to find the angles. Let's call these angles as alpha and beta. Okay, so what is cos alpha? So cos alpha will be, you have to add the squares of these two sides, which are adjacent to it, right? SAS, these two sides. So which we get 25 square plus 15 square and take away the other side which is far away that's a very easy way to remember right and you have to of course divide by these two sides which is 25 times 15 you get cos alpha similarly we will calculate cos of beta which is going to be this angle so these two sides this time so we'll do 25 square plus 20 square minus the far away side which is 15 square divided by 2 times 25 times 20. Now cosine law is used in two cases. One is when you have all the three sides given. The other one when you have included angle. So this formula is kind of used for included angle. We'll kind of inverse and later find out the angle. So that helps you, right? So now let's just uh, calculate. So if we have 25 square plus 15 square minus 20 square equals to divided by within brackets 
2 times 25 times 15 bracket close equals 2. We get 3 over 5. We'll just do uh, cos inverse of this. So we get alpha equals to cos inverse of 3 over 5. Correct. So we'll do shift cos inverse of our answer, which is 51.13 or 53.13, right? So we can actually round it to 53.1 degrees. Correct. Now let's find beta. So we'll do 25 square plus 20 square minus 15 square equals 2. And we're going to divide this number, which is 800, by 2 times 25 times 20. Right? So that gives you 4 over 5. So beta is cos inverse of 4 over 5 which is how much shift cos inverse 4 divided by 5 bracket close equals 2 this gives you 36.869 so i'll write this as rounded to one decimal place i'll write this as 36.9 degrees is that clear so now we got these two angles and uh, we can write these angles as let me take a different ink Okay. okay, this is okay. So we get these alpha as 53 degrees, okay, 0.1 degrees, and beta here is 36.9. Okay, so now our position diagram is complete, correct? So first part we have done, and that is by finding these things, we actually got our position diagram. Now let's work on the vector diagram. So how do you get the vector diagram? Let me also multiply 15 times 9.8, which gives us 147. Okay. So this value is 147 newtons. So to draw the vector diagram, you need to understand that these are the two tensions. Let's call them as tension 1 and tension 2. Now the body here is at rest that means this component of weight is in equilibrium and there is an opposite equal and opposite force acting on it correct so this equal and opposite force can be represented by the vector which is equal to 147 newtons right now, let's look into the tension 1, this one, right? So what we need to do, like in vectors, we'll just translate this vector right there, right? So parallel to this, so we'll translate this vector parallel to this. Do you see that? Parallel to this. Now, clearly, with the horizontal, what is the angle this is making? With the horizontal, this vector is making an angle of 53.1. Correct. Now, from this point, we'll now draw a vector which is going to be parallel to this, and you'll see that it'll match up with your resultant, right? So that is the equilibrate course, right? So it, it brings this is the force which acts in the opposite direction to the net force which you see here, and so it is in equilibrium, right? Now, the angle here is this angle, which is 36.9 degrees. Is that clear? Okay. So that is how you actually get your vector diagram. So let me write down this one is your vector diagram. And let me label this at tension 1, tension 2, and that is our equilibrium force, right? Now, let's calculate the tensions in each string, correct? Since we know our angles, we can actually, we know this angle also, right? 
Okay, let's add these two first, these two angles. That is the, that is the right angle, correct? Okay. So, the angles in this corner here are basically 53.1 plus 36.9, right? So, that gives us 0, 1. So, 7 and 3, 10 and 1, 4 and 5, 9. So that gives you 90 degrees in this particular case. Got it? So we get 90 degrees as a total angle at this point. We can actually find these angles also. This angle will be, now this is a straight line. This angle will be 90 minus 53.1. Correct? So let's write down this angle. Since we need to know those angles to use sine law and get T1 and T2 values. Correct? 90 minus 53.1 gives us a value of 36.9, obviously. Correct? So, you know, this angle here is actually 53.1 degrees. Correct? Okay. Now, once we know the angles in our vector diagram, we can actually apply the sine law to calculate tensions T1 and T2. Right? So, T1, this T1 is equivalent to what? You can look into the side which is opposite to T1 and that side has an angle which is 90 degrees here. So, basically it's a 90 degrees triangle. So, you could use sine law, cosine law or you could straight away write down your results because this is a 90 degrees we can easily write down the results based on the hypotenuse, right? So, let me mention here. So, our method is slightly different, easier. We have an easier option. Since we have a right triangle. Do you see that? Since that angle is 90 degrees, correct? So, think like this. What triangle we have here? Otherwise, we'll use sine law, correct? Okay. So that's our triangle, correct? Now in this triangle, what you notice here is this side is 147, correct? Now this angle is 90 degrees. One of these sides tension is T1, the other one is T2. And the angle here, we'll consider that angle, 2P 36.9. Is that clear to you? Why am I drawing it? Since we found this to be 90 degrees, we need not use sine law. That's what I want to stress on. Does it make sense to you, right? So from here, we can clearly write that sine of 36.9 degrees is equal to T2 over 147. And that means T2 is equal to 147 times sine of 36.9 degrees. Is it okay? Similarly, we can write here that cos of 36.9 degrees is equal to T1 over 147 and that implies that T1 is equal to 147 cos of 36.9 degrees. Is it clear? So let's figure it out. So we have 147 times sine of 36.9 which gives us one answer which is 88.26 let's call it 3 right newtons and the other one is 147 times cos of 36.9 which is equal to 117 point let's say 6 newtons does it make sense correct now, that is how we will do if we have found that the angle is 90 degrees. Else, let me write alternate. Use sine law. Here also, you could have used sine law. No problems. But I hope you understand and appreciate how do we draw a position diagram? How do we draw a vector diagram? 
and solve to get the tensions when all the lengths are given to us to start with and the mass of the object. Always remember that mass of the object has to be multiplied by the gravitational force to give you the net force acting downwards vertically. Right? That's what we did here. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.